This is Scott Becker with the Becker Business Minute and Becker Private Equity Podcast. Thrilled today to visit with Liz Hudson. Liz is the brilliant founder of EGH. She's an engineer by background, a consultant, a, a, a proud alumni of the University of Illinois, I believe, and, and just a brilliant, brilliant person. Um, we're going to talk to Liz really about a couple different subjects. One of them is a tie-on to a discussion we had earlier about goal setting, and that's the issue of when you set goals, you set objectives, you develop a product, for example. You develop a product or develop an idea. At what point do you abandon that idea or product or continue on with that product or idea or make pivots or changes with it? Liz, you're in the product development business. You work with private equity sponsored companies, private equity funds, often medical device companies to, to expand their product lines, to look at new products, to figure out what's achievable, what's going to work in the market, what's going to be great. When a product's not launched as you'd like it to launch, whatever business idea it might be, how do you assess whether it's time to keep going, pivot, or abandon the product or, or, or the goal? How do, how do you sort of look at those things? Yeah. This is um, you know, product development is near and dear to my heart. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's something that gets me up in the morning and keeps me up at night. I love it for, for me because it splits my brain that is really, truly half and half, half process logic, math, science, and then the other half of me that's artistic and creative and likes to sing, right? Like, so it's such a good sweet spot for both parts of my brain. So I love this. And I, and I think, I think, you know, um, a lot of times we think about product development and innovation as creative, it's thought generating, and it is all of those things. And though it deserves process. So to answer the question um, about, you know, when you have an idea that seems really good at the beginning, right? And you're at the early stages of product development as you're trekking along in that process, as I mentioned, that process that that really forces you to stop at various milestones along the way and really just chunks that into um, uh, stages, if you will, and gives you the opportunity to pause and to evaluate and think, is this the right idea still? Does it still achieve the goals that I want it to um, do? You're building in those steps along the way to actually have that conversation, have that reflection about what's going on. But I think a lot of times um, I'm, I'm certainly guilty of, of uh, this mindset um, and this kind of um, this trap that I think a lot of us fall into, which is I got this thing started. I want to see it all the way through, even when it starts to look sketchy, right? Um, you know, what, what what's sketchy? Um, it could be that, you know, the, the cost to build the product is a lot higher than we originally modeled. So it's it's not quite as profitable as it was. On, on the other end of that, the, the pricing dynamics um, might be not what we expected when we first modeled it. So now the, the top end of that, the, uh, the top end driver isn't there. So back to the profitability piece, you know, it no, might not make sense as it did in the beginning. Or um, the market dynamics have changed. Co competition came in sooner. Maybe the, the customer no longer thinks it's necessary or a, a procedure has changed and it's just, it's not there. So now, now this idea doesn't quite look right, but because we got it started in development and gosh, we're all the way into the middle of the development phase or towards the end, we're about to launch this. Should we pull the plug? And, and I think a lot of times the default answer is no, we got it started. Let's see it all the way through. And I, I think we need to challenge that, right? And, and, and think about uh, this idea of letting go of an idea and being okay with that. And, and how, when do you decide to let go of an idea? What is, because you're right, there's a tremendous amount of inertia to keep on going with an idea, unless, the times when people make a real choice are, the economics are so bad that somebody's got to pull the plug on it because it's starting to to hurt the P&L of the company as a whole. It's starting to have a serious financial impact. Uh, the company's going through a downturn, so forth. But But other than lots of financial stress around it or lots of people stress around it. You're putting a lot of your best people into it, but you don't know where else to put them. There's a lot of inertia to keep on going on projects and goals and ideas that aren't really going anyplace. When is it that you can get past that inertia and make a decision? And I always think of the three decisions are, we're going to keep going, we're going to pivot, 
I guess Ford is we're going to double down, you know, or we're going to abandon it. You know, so you, so you look at these four different decisions, you know, we're going to put more resources into it versus give up or, or pivot. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, we've got one of our products right now, one of our goals right now that is opposed to really pivoting or closing down, we're doubling down on for right or for wrong, and we'll see if that's right or not. But it, yeah. but it really is a fascinating, and it's a matter of economics as well. We're willing to take yeah. this big a bet to double down on it, then at some point we've got to make a decision that we're not going to do it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think I think we want to build in um, – well, so I think at the beginning of a project, we should be really prescriptive about what does success look like, right? So what are those metrics, be it dollars, be it customer satisfaction, be it solving a problem, what, whatever those um, uh, metrics are that define success that are critical, like got to have this. If we don't have this, we got to kill the project. Um, or nice to have. If we if we have this, it would be great. But if it doesn't happen, it's not a deal breaker. But if we have several of these not deal breakers that add up to uh, no longer make sense, I think those are things to pay attention to. So I think objectively setting those things at the get go when the emotion is not there, right? When you when you can really look at this pretty objectively at, at the beginning is a good place to start. Now I think building in pauses into the project. Um, you know, our, our team, we use StageGate quite a lot. That's that's the methodology that we use, but there's plenty of other processes that, that uh, um, organizations use. We use StageGate, which defines each one of the stages of development pretty clearly. And it says, okay, in the beginning, when you're considering the opportunity, here are the 10 things that you want to look through. Now, when you complete that stage, Let's look back at that stage and go, did we accomplish what we needed to? Did we, are we still on the same trajectory as what we set it up? Are there any deal breaker variables here? Are there any um, nice to have that have, that are no longer so nice, right? Like um, that we need to um, uh, reset and rethink about this, right? And so, and then you consciously pause, you consciously have that conversation with the right stakeholders in the organization or on your own and go, yes, I still think this makes sense. Or, um, you know, in, in StageGate, kind of the four paths there is not too different, Scott, than what you said. It's a go. That means you go forward to the next stage. You cancel. You just outright say, we're, we're not going to do this any longer. You put it on hold, right, we, where you basically pull off all resources, all time, all focus on this, and you're saying, we're not going to move forward at this at this time, we might resurrect this later, but right now we're putting it on hold. And the last thing would be a redirect, right? A redirect would be, let's let's rethink this. Maybe we need to rethink how we're moving forward um, on this project, on this program as a whole, how it fits with our strategy, whatever those things might be. But you build those things in. I've seen stage gate processes that are three stages, five stages, seven stages. You know, you don't want to custom, customize it to what your organization needs and what makes sense there. But you want to build those natural pauses into the project where you can stop and reflect and not just to your point with inertia, all of a sudden you're at the end and you look at what it was at the end versus what you had dreamed of at the beginning and the financials aren't there, the customer's not happy with it, maybe supply chain things have forced the product to be something really different than what it was at the beginning. Um, and we have this thing that I think we think to ourselves, hey, we got it launched, so all the dollars that we spent in development, they're already sunk, it doesn't matter. But what we don't realize is that once we launch, there continues to be dollars and time and energy and people that are used to support that offering. So if you've got those folks chasing ba a bad project or bad product, is that really the best use of their time? Is that the best place that we wanna spend our dollars, our time, our people, precious resources versus pulling the plug on it and saying, I'm going to redirect that to something that actually will be growth and life-giving um, to the organization and most importantly to our customers. No, I couldn't, uh, couldn't agree more. And the concept of like these different programs that sort of cause you to stop and, and decide where are we going with this, are we going forward with it or not, I think is, uh, is, is absolutely fascinating um, and probably Large companies may do that in a more institutional way. Small companies may do it in a more ad hoc way. But either way, doing it is so important. Sort of double down, keep doing what you're doing, pivot or abandon. 
big important choices because everything in an organization is about where are you focusing resources. You fight focusing on the right priorities, the right people, the right things. Uh, Liz Hudson, thank you for joining us again on the Becker Business Minute, the Becker Private Equity Podcast. Just fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Scott.